and fallout. Time, distance, and shielding. Time, meaning the longer you stay protected from fallout, the safer you will be. Distance, or the further away you get from fallout, the safer you will be. Shielding, meaning the more mass or weight you put between yourself and fallout, the safer you will be. You have often seen this sign on buildings. It means that indoors is a public fallout shelter, one of many and various kinds of buildings in your community that are similarly identified. Architects and engineers have carefully surveyed the shielding qualities of these areas to ensure they offer a minimum protection factor of 40 or more. Meaning that, in the event of fallout from a nuclear explosion, the mass and weight this shelter will place between you and the source of radiation will make you at least 40 times safer than if you were outdoors. Each of these shelters will hold at least 50 people and has been stocked by the government with austere supplies. Food, water, sanitation equipment, medical kits, and radiological instruments. But what about millions who live in suburbs or rural areas, often far beyond quick walking distance of the nearest public shelter? With foresight, you can have a home shelter for the protection of your family, built from specifications and cost estimates for various types of shelters provided by your local civil defense office. The home shelter should be stocked with supplies of food and water sufficient for two weeks. Here you are afforded time, distance, and shielding if and when fallout so dangerous to human health should ever occur in your community. If there is a nuclear attack and you survive the initial effects of an explosion, you will have at least a half hour to get to a public or home fallout shelter. Therefore, to be safe from radiation sickness, get into the best available shelter as soon as possible. Once there, stay put because each time you're exposed to fallout radiation over a period of a few days, the dosage continues to build until it reaches dangerous quantities. If you're among those compelled to travel through a fallout area on essential errands, there are certain rules to follow. Protect your body with boots or rubbers, gloves, headgear, and outer clothing that can be removed before you re-enter the shelter. On returning, brush off the rest of your clothing thoroughly, as well as any parts of your body that may have been exposed to fallout. If sufficient water is available, wash your face and hands carefully. Remember, these are the dosages of radiation as they affect human health. I repeat, do not try to diagnose. Merely treat the symptoms just as you would if they were the result of any other type of illness. These are the symptoms of mild as well as moderate radiation sickness, one or more of which may appear shortly after exposure to fallout. Fatigue, loss of appetite, nausea, vomiting, prostration. The treatment is rest. For nausea, you may give the patient any of the commercial preparations that settle an upset stomach or one half teaspoon of baking soda in a cup of water. Tea and other hot liquids may be helpful. When a high fever is present, apply cold wet packs. Aspirin also tends to reduce the fever. In severe radiation sickness, along with the early symptoms, other symptoms may appear a week or more after exposure. Recovery is possible, but it'll take longer. The symptoms are diarrhea, inflammation of mouth and throat, loss of hair. For treatment, 
control the diarrhea, and give aspirin and warm water gargles. People are naturally alarmed at the thought of bodily changes that may follow severe radiation sickness, such as loss of hair or sterility. These conditions are usually temporary and will disappear with recovery. So I hope we've dispelled another commonly held myth. You can get over radiation sickness just as you get over many others. Nevertheless, don't minimize the danger of fallout. Remember, its effects are cumulative. The only real protection against it is to take shelter. Now, let's review some of the outstanding facts we have learned in this brief exploration of a vitally important subject. Fallout is composed of trillions of particles of dust that are made radioactive by residue from the nuclear weapon during the aftermath of the explosion. In a nuclear attack, depend on your local radio station to tell you where fallout is taking place you may be able to see some of the fallout dust when it reaches the Earth. But you cannot taste, smell, or feel the radiation itself. The gamma rays given off by fallout are able to injure or destroy the living cells of our body if we are exposed long enough. Food or water in containers that prevent contamination by fallout dust is perfectly safe. Radiation is harmful only to living tissues. Packaged foods that have been exposed to fallout should be opened carefully. By following proper procedures, you can eat such foods without danger to health. Radiation can pass through most building materials, but its intensity is diminished in proportion to the weight and mass of the material or the shielding. The intensity also decreases with distance from the fallout. The radiation rate will decrease or decay rapidly with time. It is most dangerous in the first few days after explosion. Thus, the three basic factors that protect you from fallout radiation are time, distance, and shielding. You should know the location of the nearest public shelter in your community. Inside it, you will be at least 40 times safer from fallout than you would be outdoors. And it has been stocked with supplies to sustain its occupants for up to two weeks. If you're not within walking distance of a public shelter, you can provide a satisfactory home shelter for your family. Radiation is invisible, but we have accurate instruments with which to measure it in Rentgen units. The dosimeter can be worn on the person and measures the accumulated radiation exposure, the total dose at any given time. The Geiger counter measures radiation in fractions of Rentkins per hour, inside or outside the shelter. The survey meter is used to measure the higher intensities of radiation that may be present outside the shelter. Assuming that you have the protection of a good shelter within a half hour after nuclear attack, you will probably have little or no radiation sickness. If there are victims who appear to have radiation sickness, do not diagnose. Treat the symptoms. Perhaps the most important thing you have learned is to see the danger in its true perspective. Make no mistake. Nuclear attack would be a terrible catastrophe. Millions of our people would be killed by the initial blast and heat. Millions more would be threatened by death from radioactive fallout. But that is a threat that can be combated. Can with knowledge, preparation, and courage be faced and conquered.